Hello, Elkhart Community Schools staff and families. This past Wednesday, Elkhart County moved into red in the color coding system from the Indiana State Department of Health. That means that according to those metrics from the state, there is community spread at a pretty high level within the district and the county. And many people know that as they've heard from health professionals and other people that there is a concern about the amount of spread within the community. Elkhart Community Schools had developed a hybrid plan so that we would be able to maintain staying in school by distancing our students within the buildings, half of our students reporting on alternating days in order for us to keep the space that's important. As I've heard health professionals talk and as we've evaluated our plan, we keep looking at three important S's. We look at supplies, we look at space, and we look at staffing. I've heard doctors over the past week refer to those three pieces often in terms of the capacity and the crises they're facing within their hospitals. For us, we have the supplies. We have masks for students, we have PPE for our teachers, and we have the hand sanitizer and the disinfecting and sanitizing uh, chemicals and, and bioagents that we need in order to make sure that our schools are clean. In terms of spacing, we've been doing an excellent job of that at Elkhart. We have the spacing within our buildings. We have students spaced out the six feet at least. And in terms of the people that are being put out of our schools because of positive cases, the ratio of close contacts to positive cases remains to be very, very low. Regional data and state data indicates that within schools, the close contacts and the spread within schools is still very, very low. So in terms of spies and spacing, Elkhart Community Schools has been able to be successful. Up until the last couple of weeks, we've been able to manage staffing. However, that has reached a critical point for us, and it is indicative of what's happening more broadly in our community, with employers having shortages of staff, and particularly our healthcare providers finding that they're really struggling to be able to maintain the staff they need. This has put us in a position where, as we're evaluating where we are in terms of red and where we will be going over the next few weeks, that Elkhart Community Schools is going to be changing the proposal for what we're doing in terms of educating kids. Beginning the Monday after Thanksgiving, Elkhart Community Schools will move fully virtual for students in grades nine through 12. Our high school students will move there. This is because we have had staffing shortages at our high school, as many as 30, student, 30 teachers a day. We also have a difficulty because of busing to be able to ensure that we would have enough bus drivers to run those secondary routes. Knowing that high school students are the most likely to be able to manage learning virtually and have had the most experience learning virtually in our district, that's the reason for that move. The expectation will be for those high school students to be operating on a synchronous schedule, meaning that during the day they would log into their class times and participate in Google Meets and sessions with their teachers. And on the days when they would have an alternating day of not being in instruction normally, those would be days that would be conducted like they have been. Fridays would remain an e-learning day for everybody. Our goal in doing this is because our staffing shortages and our numbers of cases have proportionally been higher in our high schools. Because of that, we want to be able to maintain having our middle schools and our elementary schools open. In doing this, we would divert resources from our high schools to our middle schools and our elementaries to ensure that they can remain open paraprofessionals, custodians, food service personnel, and routing of buses would be able to ensure that we have the capacity that we need in order to do that. We've been shifting people around, we've been trying coverage, we've been doing lots of things, and we just reach, have reached a point where that is no longer possible. For our middle schools and our elementaries, we would remain on the hybrid plan so that those students can remain in person contact with teachers, have those couple days during the week where they're meeting with their teachers, and we're able to check on their well-being and make sure that students are making progress. As we move forward, if we would continue to have challenges in terms of staffing at our elementary or middle schools, we would meet that the way that we have already. Up to this point, we have had three of our elementary schools already go on to a short-term closure in order to meet those staffing challenges. We would continue to look at the data, look at those buildings um, week by week, day by day, to make sure that they're okay. Our instructional leadership team will meet with those building principals on a weekly basis to assess where we are and continue to evaluate what happens. The moving of those high school students to virtual will be a virtual plan that will carry us through the remainder of the semester and carry us until January 19th. 
The thinking here is that we would have all of that ability for staff to be able to reset and get rebuilt in those buildings. It takes into account what many of us are expecting to be increased cases and increased incidences of COVID between the holidays and even immediately after. By doing this, we would then be able to say that when we come back on January 19th, that we have put into a, a two week incubation period at the very beginning of the semester after the holidays to allow any cases of COVID to run their course. And we can truly come back on January 19th with a reset for the high schools. Within the hybrid situ situation for our middle schools and elementaries, the goal there again is to have those school students be in in-person instruction and maintain that hybrid as long as we can. However, if we arrive at a place where those buildings are not able to do that, we might go into a short-term closure, or we could go into a closure that would take us through the rest of the semester based on the fact that we'll be down to a few weeks after Thanksgiving. Again, we ask for your flexibility. We ask for your patience. We're trying to reshuffle our resources and maintain what we can to keep those younger students who need our attention and need our guidance in those classrooms as long as possible. This means that we all need to do our part. Many of you are hearing that over Thanksgiving, that people are encouraged to limit or cancel those large gatherings. It is so important based on the executive order that came from the governor and recently our health officer in the county for people to wear masks, wash their hands, maintain that physical distance. Schools are not an island and what we're doing within our schools while we've tried very hard with our hybrid plan to maintain space and we've been moving staff around and we've been trying to juggle it, what happens in the community impacts what's happening in our schools. And we've arrived at a point where that impact is something we can't ignore anymore and we have to take this action. If we wanna have a chance of keeping those middle schools and elementary schools in session, we need to make sure that we're doing the things in the broader community that mirror what we're doing within our schools. And if we want to have any chance of having all students return back in January and get back on our hybrid plan and be able to have that in-person instruction, we need the community members to do that. We need it. Health professionals and our hospitals and our nurses and our doctors need it. We need everybody to step up and do that work so that we can get back to where we have our students in our classrooms all the time, our economy has an assurance of being open, and our healthcare professionals can take care of the people during this crisis. For those of you that have been doing the things that need to be done and been encouraging and supportive of our efforts so far, thank you very much. Again, we will continue to ask for your grace and patience as we work and adjust. But the important thing here is for us to all work together to do what is good for the benefit of our community and to keep everyone safe. Thank you very much.